Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome to the On This Date in MLB podcast. This is episode number 19. Um, we're almost on number 20, bro, so that's a pretty cool little milestone. Um, so before we get into all this stuff, uh, how you been, bro? Uh, doing good, bro. Doing good. Uh, trying, trying, to, trying to survive this winter, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've been getting a lot of rain. Yeah, man. Uh, I was going to say that I think this is the first week in like six or eight weeks that, that we haven't had any Korea news, right? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, man. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the rest of the winter has in store for us, uh, baseball boys. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so, yeah, guys, uh, you guys can find us on Instagram. That is where we are most active. Right there, we post four to ten times a day. Uh, the comment section is very active. You can always stop by, drop a comment there. Sometimes the comments make it to the show when they're funny. You know, we'll screenshot it and throw it up here when we talk about a specific feature. Um, so, yeah, that link will be down below. You can also find us on another YouTube channel, same name, on this date in MLB. Right there, we post one video per day. It is a YouTube short, so it's anywhere between 30 to 60 seconds long. And we upload once a day right there. We have 300 plus videos there. So make sure you go and check that one out for your quick little dose of baseball history. Um, what else do we got, bro? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Just don't forget to turn on those post notification, guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you, uh, you you guys don't miss a thing, and you guys can keep interacting with us. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, and then obviously like and subscribe to this video. Um, this, you know, this is where you will find these shows. So this week we will be covering three features. We will talk about. Um, blockbuster trades that did not happen and we will end it with a cool little sporkle game um, as of this week Kevin is 1-0 and and I am 0-1 and we were talking about maybe incentivizing the game to where we um, kind of give something away towards the end maybe at the end of this season in October but we'll figure that out as we go so just for the record Kevin is 1-0 I'm 0-1 so I'm already down so I got to win today. <laughs> yeah, man, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if I can make it two in a row, man. <laughs> all right, bro. Lead us off. All right. So the first one we got for this week is from January 9th, 2005. Um, the Mets signed Carlos Beltran to a seven-year deal for $119 million. Uh, so I was actually impressed to read this. That, uh, the 27-year-old Beltran, he became the 10th $100 million player in MLB history. And that that seemed like such a such a long time ago. But w- would you take a take a wild guess? How many active players have a hundred million dollar contracts right now? Considering that Carlos Beltran was the tenth one in two thousand five. So active players. Yeah, active players right now. Because I tried looking up how many hundred hundred million dollar contracts have been given out, but I just couldn't find a solid answer. But I did find how mm-hmm. many active players have a hundred million dollar contracts right now. I would say twenty three. Nah, uh, you're halfway there, bro. So fifty two. What? The f- it's crazy, right? Oh man, I thought crazy I was being a little. No, yeah, bro. I, it makes sense, you know. Crazy how the how the salaries have jumped up, man. Really, really crazy. Mm-hmm. But uh, just real quick before you get into your uh, to your stats that led into that contract, his average salary of seventeen million uh, ties Jeff Bagwell for the seventh highest in the in in the league. He trails Alex Rodriguez, Manny Ramirez, Derek Jeter, Sammy Sosa, and Barry Bonds. So mm-hmm. uh, some, some elite company there. And mm-hmm. Houston had offered Beltran a seven-year deal for $108 million, but uh, Houston didn't want to include the no-trade clause. So that's kind of the the, the ultimate re- uh, reason why he went to, to New York. Um, you want to give, get into some of those stats, bro? Yes, sir. Um, sorry, once I was just starting my timer to try to keep us on track. Um, so, yeah, Carlos Beltran played for the Kansas City Royals um, from 1998 to 2004, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, he won the Rookie of the Year, and he played a half season, the half season of 2004 with the Houston Astros, which Kevin will get into a little more. So in that time span, those, um, what is that, um, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, that's uh, seven seasons. In those seven, I had to count my fingers. Good job, bro. <laughs> Thanks. I got, I got my fingers too. You need help, bro. <laughs> uh, so in that span, seven seasons, uh, 885 games, 3,911 plate appearances, 
985 hits, 616 runs, 173 doubles, 146 home runs, 569 RBI, uh, almost 200 stolen bases, 192 to be exact. Only caught stealing how many times do you think, bro? Uh, wait, say, say the amount of stolen bases again. 192. 192? Caught stealing probably 30? 50? No, no, no. I'm going to say 40. 23 times. Oh, shit. It's pretty good, huh? Damn. Because uh, uh, real quick, I'll finish it off right now. But like when you think Beltran, um, I'm sure some people do, you know, like, but you don't think space dealer, you know, because <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You like, I always like take them more as a, like, a, I wouldn't say power hitter, bro, but like um, a power alleys type hitter, you know, with the doubles and like, mm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I always thought of him like a five tool player, but you're That's you're true. right. I, I never I never thought of him like as a you know as a base as a base dealer. I, I wouldn't even like I wouldn't even think he he would he would got like over twenty in a in a season. But yeah, so that that would that was averaging out to twenty seven a season. And he actually had he actually had forty one. He actually had forty one in his last year in Kansas City. That's that's incredible that's pretty, stuff. That's huh? impressive. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many home runs? If you don't mind checking real quick. That's in that his, season. In his last year in Kansas City, 26. Oh, oh no, no, no. Well, that was his last full season in Kansas City. He had 26 because that half season he had 15. Okay. Um, to round it off, his OPS, 844. His OPS plus 113. A total of 1,700 total bases. Um, so you want to get into his, a little bit of those Houston stats real quick, bro. Yeah, bro. So, uh, so I, uh, I read that, uh, people were, were afraid of him going to New York because maybe he wasn't going to be able to, to perform in the, in the bright lights of New York, uh, playing in Kansas city, right? Small, small mm -hmm. town, uh, team, but in his short time in Houston, he, he excelled, bro. He had a really good, uh, really good half season there in, in 90 games. He had 121 runs and 86 hits. No, that, that can't be right, right? 121 runs. And how many games? Uh, 70 runs. My bad. I, I, <laughs> I know. It was 70 runs in 90 games. Bro. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? 86 hits, 17 doubles, 7 triples, 23 home runs. Uh, he hit 258, and his war was 4.5 in those 90 games. But what was what was more impressive was his, uh, his postseason record. Mm -hmm. um, he had a, he he set a new postseason record, hitting a home run in five straight games, and he tied Barry Bonds's mark uh, with eight home runs in uh, in the postseason. Which is uh, you know that that's that's when players get paid the big bucks, right? When they they can perform in the postseason, and I can yeah, bet you sure. I I can bet you a hundred percent that if he would have had a bad October, they would have used that shit against him in the you know in those contract negotiations. For so sure, overall, in twelve games that that October, he was twenty for forty four for a four thirty five average, uh, twenty one runs, nineteen RBI, and six stolen bases. Like like you just mentioned, you know, he was he was still uh, stealing those bags, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, over overall in uh, in New York, he played. He ended up playing eight hundred thirty nine games. He hit two eighty. With the on base percentage of 369 and a slugging percentage of 500. Uh, 149 homers, 551 runs, and he drove in 559 uh, RBIs. Uh, five All Star game, five All Star game selections, uh, three Gold Gloves, and two Silver Sluggers in, in his time in uh, New York. So uh, he he still you know he didn't he didn't shy away from the bright lights in New York and he was still a productive hitter. Yeah. For sure. Um, and just real quick, I want to highlight the six stolen bases you said in the playoffs, right? Yes, sir. Uh, stolen bases are massive in the postseason. Like, they change the energy. They put the defense on their toes. Like, it's a very, it's a very, I don't know how to put it, a very dangerous thing, you know, for both sides, you know, because you can get caught stealing. But once you get that guy in scoring position, or the third base. It's a very, very dangerous situation for the defense. Um, because we all know as baseball lovers how big momentum is in the playoffs. I'm sure it is for all the sports, but um in the chess game that is baseball, those little pawn moves, those little night moves that 
these players do like that. Um, they can cause waves and they ripple throughout the game. Um, so do you have anything else on his Houston stats or New York stats before I go into um, his career stats? No, no, that's it. Okay, cool. And then Kevin still has one more nugget he wants to add at the end, but I'm bringing up the career stats just to maybe bring up the question that does he deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? So just think about that, the viewer, and then Kevin will have his say right now too as I read these stats. 2,586 games for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams. Um, in those games, he put together 2,725 hits. 565 doubles, 435 home runs, 1,587 RBI, 312 to, uh, stolen bases, only caught 49 times, 1,084 walks, a batting average of 279, OPS 837, OPS plus 119, and total base count is 4,751. All that adds up to a baseball reference war of 70.1. So the question, does he deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, bro? I will get you his fielding percentage very quick, but he was a great fielder as well. Yeah, yeah. I remember him making a couple good catches out there too. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, bro? Hall of Fame, 986 fielding percentage. Just to give you a quick dry answer, I say yes. I say, yeah. I, he's, a, he's, a, so, he's a first battle Hall of Famer in, uh, in my book, actually. But uh, no. honestly... Go go ahead, go ahead. I like you, that Astro stuff doesn't... Um, exactly, you think that has that, something to do with it? That's exactly what I was going to go into. I, I think they're going to use that shit against them, bro, un unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But um, so before that, that whole Astro's cheating scandal was was uncovered, I, I had already thought he was he had a Hall of Fame path career, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then I remember uh, seeing a couple of interviews of him just hearing him talk baseball. His knowledge, baseball-wise, was just you know out, out of this world. The way his his brain processes baseball, yeah, and the the way he was able to pick apart pitches, bro. The way I hear him talk about baseball like that, it, it's it's impressive, and it just sucks that he kind of he was kind of like uh, the scapegoat for that the Astros stuff, right? Yeah. None of the players, none of the players got. Got blamed, bro, and <laughs> Beltran lost his chance to manage the match because of that shit. So you're so right, bro. I forget that. Yeah, man. So that. it's just just a shitty situation, but yeah, ho hopefully he gets in eventually, man. Yeah, yeah. I think he's a Hall of Famer as well. Um, first, first ballot or uh, first ballot for me, yes, bro. With those home oh, runs, those hits, I would, uh, I would say, yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say, bro. The hits over 2,500 hits, um, 400 over 400 home runs, almost 500. Um, the ribbies are there, 1,500, and, and the stolen bases over 300 stolen bases. I, I think that's that's a good milestone. The 300, um, and, and and the doubles, bro. The doubles are up there, five, six, five. Yeah, you're right. That's that's, that's, that's a. Nice. Very high number for, for and, and the the war too, man. Seventy point one. That's uh, mm -hmm. players I mean, are in with a uh, short uh lesser player, war. Yeah, like twenty twenty less war. I've, I've seen players in the hall, man. So yeah, yeah ho hopefully he gets in. And uh, just that that nugget that you mentioned, bro. Uh, in two thousand eight, uh, Beltran was the last Met player to hit a home run at Shea Stadium. Ooh. Um, so that's a that's a good nugget for you. I, I don't have who hit the last home run at Shea, but he's the last Met player that that did it. So that's okay. a that's a good uh good trivia question for you, man. <laughs> that is a good one. I like that one. Uh, how much sweeter would it have been if he just was a manager for the Mets? But right. I mean, now they got Buck Showalter, who recently was voted the sexiest manager alive. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> I did see that. I did see that. That, that, article, that article was uh, interesting, to say the least. <laughs> so let's get into the next one, bro. Yes, sir, man. So this next one we got is the first home run derby uh, that was televised on January uh, 9th, 1960. Mm. Um, do you want to get into it, bro? Yeah, so just some general info. This is not the home run derby we know today. This is inspiration for the home run derby that we do know today. And um, it was a show that ran for 26 episodes with the winner receiving $2,000, which Kevin will break down the prizes a little bit later. Um, and I'm just going to give you guys some quick info on the back end of the show. It was written by Jack Harvey. 
directed by Benjamin Stoloff, presented by Mark Scott or narrated by, and he would have um, later die in 1960, July 19th, 1960 of a heart attack at the age of 45, very young. And the producers did not decide to, uh, they decided to not replace him. And just a few short months later, the director, Benjamin yeah. Stoloff, passed away that same year. So, you know, sad stuff that that kind of happened because then it makes you wonder, like, maybe they could have um, kept it going. And who knows what the home run would have, the home run derby would have evolved yeah. into with yeah. all, the, all those decades. But, you know, maybe it was a tribute to them to, out of respect. Um, 26 episodes, as uh, 26 episodes have said before, before. Producer was Lou Breslow, cinematography, Dick Rawlings, editor, Tony Martinelli. Running time was 30 minutes. Um, I would have tuned in, bro. Yeah. Oh, Regular Homer and Derby show. Uh, the production companies, Ziv Television Programs, Homer Productions, and the distributors, MGM Television, Peter Rogers, and the Peter Rogers Organization. And as Kevin stated, it started January 9th, and it ran all the way through to July 2nd, 1960. So as you can see, July 2nd was just um, about two weeks, if not a week or so, a week and a half before um, the narrator passed away. So do you want to give us some more info, bro, on, like, on the details of how this show was basically produced and what, what it entailed? Yeah, yeah. real quick before I get into that, uh, I, I, I didn't know that the director died uh, shortly after there. So mm -hmm. just... Thinking real quick, do you think maybe they plan replacing the narrator eventually? Maybe they, they wanted to take like a season off. But then after the director passed away too, that probably just kind of just stopped everything, no? Uh, I th I think so. We're sorry, bro. I don't mean to cut you off. But um, from what I read right here, bro, it said that in the wake of his death, the producers decided not to replace him and instead canceled the show. So I think they canceled um immediately. But that is a good uh, question. Maybe, maybe... If that didn't happen like that, maybe there's some more information out there that we don't have. But that's for sure. Probably, yeah. probably could have had some more, uh, some more history there. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just just real quick. So each each batter had uh, nine innings to hit as many home runs as possible. Um, each inning had three outs, of course, and any ball you not hit for a home run counted as an out. But they also counted strikes as outs. So mm -hmm. they they had a home uh, had a home plate umpire, and they had a. Uh, with the mask and everything, man, I, I thought that shit was kind of funny. They had umpires down the lines uh, to help with any uh, questionable fly balls out there. And the winner received a check for two grand mm -hmm. and was invited back the next week uh, to face a new opponent. The, the loser, the second place guy, received a check for $1,000. So they, that, that's, I thought that was kind of cool. They still went home with some money. And, you know, back, back then in the day, uh, I, I don't I don't have the exact numbers with the inflation, but I I know that that money was was helpful to those players back then because they they weren't making uh they weren't making the millions that they're making nowadays, right? Um, I got you on that. That's what I'm working on right now, brother. So keep good, good shape, bro. Good yeah. shape, bro. Um, so if a batter hit three home runs in a row, he would receive a five hundred dollar bonus check. So a real four, quick, just just to give you guys a picture, um, two thousand uh -huh. is it? Equal to twenty thousand today, nineteen thousand seven hundred seventy-three bucks. So twenty hey, bro, racks that's, bro, for that's you know, not, a little thirty-minute show. That's nothing to laugh at, right there, bro. That's no, a, no, no. I'm pretty sure your uh, players nowadays wouldn't 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 mind uh, twenty twenty thousand dollar check. And the five hundred, bro, real quick. Yeah, uh, yeah. So if a batter hit three home runs in a row, he would receive a five hundred dollar bonus check, which was five thousand four thousand nine hundred forty-three dollars. So, yeah. yeah, keep it going, but yeah, keep keep, keep yeah. A, a fourth home run in a row would be worth another five hundred dollar bonus check. So eight bands, and any consecutive home runs hit after that would would be worth a thousand dollars each. Mm. Damn. Yeah, bro. So, um, just just real quick, let me get into this first uh, home run episode that was between Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays. So, uh, Mickey Mantle wins it in comeback fashion, nine to eight. Mays was actually up eight to two after five innings. Uh, started off hot, but then he cooled down. And they actually had a side bet uh, for five hundred dollars be between the two guys, and they <laughs> they doubled it. They doubled it in the seventh inning when uh when Mays was up by five. So I I, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, ballsy too, <laughs> right? 
Yeah. And uh, so Mano hit two home runs in the bottom of the eighth to tie it up. And then he hit uh, the home run in, in his first swing in the bottom of the ninth to win it. Um, so I, I actually watched uh, almost uh, the entire episode, the, the episode on YouTube. And I, I, I thought it was a pretty cool, pretty cool show, bro. Um, just real quick, uh, 19 players, including nine uh, future Hall of Famers, uh, participated in the series. And they, uh, the contest was held in Wrigley Field. Not in Chicago, but in Los Angeles. Mm. Um, ended up being uh, the the first home park for the, the what would eventually be the California Angels. And uh, that site was chosen because the dimensions were pretty much equal from right field to left field. Um, down the left field line, it was 340 feet. Down the right field line, it was 339. Um, left center field was 345 feet. And right center field was the exact same, 345 feet. The mm-hmm. only difference was that the left field wall was a few feet higher. Like, no, nothing crazy, like two two to four feet higher. Mm-hmm. So so that's why they chose uh, that ballpark. And uh, and I I looked it up now just just because I was curious the location of that park. Uh, it's actually in South Central uh, Los Angeles. Oh, so I, I thought that was interesting. Uh, a, a little little to the northwest uh, corner of uh, Huntington Park, out, out there oh, in, uh, in the in the in the tough parts of Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> the least, <huh? laughs> yeah. So I thought that was interesting. And then uh, one one. Uh, one nugget for you that I found, bro. I, I don't know if you read this. Um, some players uh, started using golf gloves uh, as batting gloves because batting gloves weren't a thing back then. Oh, so they started it, they started it during the show, and that kind of that kind of spurred that whole batting glove thing. And Ken Harrelson of the Washington Senators is uh, credited with bringing batting gloves into the regular season, and, uh, and that was in the 1964 season. Wow, so I thought that was interesting, bro. I don't know, I don't know if you if you saw that one. I didn't. Do you think it was because <clears throat> obviously they take batting practice, bro? But do you think it was because they were swinging so hard for a long period of time that yeah. they wanted maybe to avoid getting blisters or the hands getting too sweaty? Damn, bro, I did not know that, bro. That's, That's crazy, crazy, right? Yeah, bro. And just That's thinking back, one. like I, you never saw anybody with with batting gloves in some of those old no. videos, you know. Nah, bro. Damn. So that, 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 was, that was cool. <laughs> Imagine the roasting the guys got, though, the ones that would start using bedding gloves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, know, you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're saying. Like, uh, you know, like what, what the hell are you using, bro? Like, uh, be, be, be a man, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's crazy because nowadays you do see, like, maybe a handful of guys bro, that don't use gloves. That's that, and yeah. and they always talk about it. It's, a, it's, it's a thing. It's, it's a it's yeah. a thing, right? Yeah, like yeah, they're like, damn, bro, look at this guy, bro. This guy is not wearing any. Posada's <laughs> one of them. I know Will Myers doesn't wear any gloves. That's right. Uh, but yeah, bro, it's just they're different, bro. Those guys, they're different breed, bro. Yeah. So um, that, that's all. That's all I got on that one, bro. If you got anything uh, else, uh, I that's it, brother. Uh, oh, real quick, just a. Uh, some derby records. This is from the more modern um, era, our era, when I started in the 80s. Most wins in the derby, Ken Griffey Jr., 94, 98, 99. Most appearances in the derby, Ken Griffey Jr., eight of them. Um, that spanned from 1990 to 2000. Most home runs, one round, 35 Pete Alonso with 21. Uh, 35 Pete Alonso um, in 2021. Most home runs in one event. Uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. with 91, 2010, 2019. Now, those last two, yeah, those last two are a little different, bro, because if um, some of the, the viewers are old enough, we used to go off the 10 out system versus the, the bonus round and the time, you know, and all that. And the, they would call timeout and, you know, all that. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, that's all I got right there, bro. Um, maybe should, sometime it- in the. Uh-huh. They should take it back. They should take it back to these rules, uh, the original home <laughs> derby rules. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's all I got, brother. Let's get into the next one. Sounds good, bro. So the last feature for this week, we got uh, uh the Orioles training way future Hall of Famer Kurt Schilling. On uh, this is from January eleventh, nineteen ninety one. I I think you're leading this one off, right, bro? Or was that me? yeah. Um. So 
I just want to like talk about a little bit of his. He didn't get much of a chance in the majors with Baltimore. From '88 to 1990, he only pitched in 44 games. Um, 16 of those were finished. Five of those were starts, and all and three saves. Um, all that amounted amounted to 69.1 innings. Um, he allowed 70 hits, 35 earned runs, a 4.54 ERA. 32 walks, 42 strikeouts, uh, a sub average ERA plus of 85. So very underwhelming um, debut for the youngster. But um, um, he, he was shuttled between the big league and the AAA club, the Rochester Red Wings. In 1989, he led the International League in wins, starts, complete game shutouts, and innings. Now that's what earned him the call up. And then um, shortly after um, 1990, he was shipped off to the Houston Astros during the 1991 winter. So I know you have a little more info on the specifics of the trade, bro. Yes, sir. So he was uh, shipped along with Pete Harnish and Steve Finley uh, for first baseman Glenn Davis. So Glenn, Glenn Davis was actually hitting like the prime part of his career. Mm. So uh, Houston fans were actually upset to see him go. And he was, Davis was going to be 30 in uh, that 91 season. And he, he was establishing himself as a, as a power hitter in the big leagues. He had hit at least 20 home runs in six straight seasons, including three 30-homer uh, seasons. Uh, two-time All-Star, and he finished uh, in the top 10 MVP voting three times. So uh, he, he was a, a prized commodity uh, for the Orioles, right? But after he went to Baltimore, just injuries just didn't let him uh, live up to those numbers. And I, I thought it was interesting that uh, when, the, when the Orioles brought up Schilling, they, they used him out of a bullpen, especially mm-hmm. after you got, in, got into those stats as, as him as a starter in the minors. So it yeah. just, just interesting how they, they, didn't let him, uh, they didn't let him cook before shipping him away, right? Yeah. And he, he was 24 years old, uh, coming off of 2.54 ERA in 46 innings out of that bullpen in, in uh, 1990. And what I, I I I'm baffled, bro. Um, one of the one of the comments in the on the Instagram post, Rick Flair X, uh, mentioned how somehow the Astros blew this just as bad as Baltimore did. So Schilling spent the '91 season uh, splitting time between the major leagues and the minors, and he was traded away, like you mentioned, right? No, no, excuse me, my bad. So he spent the '91 season with Houston. Uh, mm-hmm. between the majors and the minors mm-hmm. and he he was traded away in 1992 to Philadelphia for Jason Grimsley um mm-hmm. Jason Jason Grimsley never pitched in the for the major league ball club in Houston uh spent spent the 92 season in AAA and was released in March of 93 so the Houston never never got a, any any solid production out of Schilling uh, Finley was part of that 12 player trade that we spoke about a few weeks ago oh, with yeah. uh, San, San Diego um, and turned into an awesome power hitter uh, in the, the late 90s there. Uh, I, I think he's a borderline Hall of Famer, Steve Finley. I don't know about yeah. you. Um, before we get sidetracked there, real quick, just a real quick yes or no answer from you, bro. So, um, he's, I would he's, say he's, he's got over 2,500 hits, uh, over 300 stolen bases. Um, this just real quick, uh, 304 home runs, 44 yeah. point, 44 point two war. For me, uh, I mean, the war, a lot of people like it's, I guess, make or break deal, but I like going off the raw numbers, bro. And if it's 2,500 hits and 300 home runs, bro, that is a very, that's a very incredible combination, man. And, and the stolen bases, bro. I, mm-hmm. I wouldn't think of him as a, as a, you know, as a, as a speed guy, but he, he was mm-hmm. there, you know. That, that club's got to be very, very small. Uh, 2,500 hits, 300 home runs, 300 stolen bases. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to follow up on that trade, uh, Har- Harnish, the last player of that trade, was traded to the Mets uh, for a pair of players who never reached the major leagues. So Houston kind of, they, they won that trade against Baltimore, but they, they turned around and uh, and then fumbled the bag there a little bit, bro. I, 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 uh, I couldn't believe that shit happened. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so they fumbled the bag and Schilling would go on to have one of the greatest pitching careers in the modern era. He became a six-time All-Star. Uh, and shortly after um, joining the Phillies, he became the 1993 NLCS MVP. He won the World Series in 2001 with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He led the league twice um, in wins uh, in 2001 with the NL and 2004 with the AL. And he he led the NL twice in innings pitch, 1998, 2001. Uh, 20 win seasons, three of them, 15 win seasons, eight of them. I know wins have gone by the wayside uh, recent years. Yeah. But they, they still mean something, bro. They mean they still they're still significant in my eyes. They it's a win for the team, bro. Like I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, three hundred strikeouts, three hundred strikeout seasons, three of them, two hundred strikeout seasons, five, um, and a three time World Series team. Red Sox two times, and the D backs that one time. So I <laughs> think. It's, we always say this, bro, but like, who would have known? You know, like, it's so it's such a crazy game, man. It's such a crazy game, and I don't know what clicks with some of these guys, bro. That they don't just start, you know, like yeah. they they flourish a little later and they end up having having careers like this, bro. It's just well, like it's just uh, like it's, I, I, no, you're, like a, you're right. It's, it's it's crazy how shit happens because even in even in Philadelphia, you, you didn't step into the rotation until some injuries happened. You know, yeah. So several different shit had to happen for you know. Different things led led to that to those careers ended ending up the way they ended up, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you're right. You're right, man. Uh, Got to be tough to be in the in those front offices making those decisions, right? Yeah, bro. Because <laughs> you like they're just probably so convinced that the guy they're acquiring is gonna be that guy. So is exactly. the other team, you know? They're like, hey, this is let's just stop. <laughs> It's just something what, like what, uh, what what could what could have been, right? Oh, yeah, like you said that one time to be a fly on the wall during these conversations. Huh? Exactly, I exactly. So, uh, kind of in 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 that spirit, in the spirit of uh of transactions, crazy transactions, and also in the spirit of uh our our boy Carlos Correa uh going around and joining and not joining different teams. Uh, <laughs> I, f- I found this I found this article uh, on MLB dot com from uh i think this was late december early january of 12 trades that didn't happen 12 blockbuster trades that didn't happen um so just real quick uh we're we're, we're gonna run through them uh we're gonna go back and forth run through them real quick just so we can get them out and then we're gonna mm-hmm. focus on focus on one that that we both uh we both chose as the most uh most shocking one that we read um so the first one on the list is uh, Roberto Clemente almost signed with the Giants in 1954. And the one that follows that, and none of these are in order. They're just listed on MLB.com as Kevin stated. The Yankees almost traded Don Mattingly to the Giants for Will Clark in 1988. Um, then the Yankees almost traded Ricky Henderson to the Giants in 1989. Uh, he actually vetoed that trade. Uh, Ricky oh. Henderson did. <laughs> well. Um, another crazy one. The Pirates almost traded Barry Bonds to the Braves in 1992. Damn! Imagine, imagine, uh, imagine Barry on those 90s uh, races. Probably would have probably got some more rings, bro. That's what I was gonna say. Probably wouldn't have lost all those World Series that they did in the 90s, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, after that, Barry Bonds almost signed with the Yankees in 1992. Mm. <laughs> And so then I'm after not, that I'm one, Greg Maddox, Greg Maddox too, almost signed with the Yankees. Now imagine um, Greg Maddox and Barry Bonds on the Braves or Greg Maddox and Barry Bonds on the Yankees in those 90s teams. That would have been wild, man. Crazy. Yeah. Um, another Yankee one. Uh, the Yankees almost traded Mariano Rivera to the Mariners for Felix Fermin in 1996. And then after that one, the Expos almost traded Pedro Martinez to the Cleveland Indians for Baltimore, Baltimore for Bartolo Colon, Jarrett Wright, and a few prospects in 97. The next one is the Mariners almost traded uh, Ken Griffey Jr. to the Mets in 1999. 
he vetoed that. He vetoed that trade too. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine a '90s Griffey in a different uniform. You know, right? During it, because Griffey in his prime, bro, automatically Mariners. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's not, and then all the all the Griffey red. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the Rangers almost traded Alex Rodriguez to the Red Sox for Manny Ramirez and a young John Lester in 2004. That was that was, that was, a, that was a crazy one. So that one actually got canceled by the. Players Union because they rod they rod wanted to take a, a cut in his salary, so that <laughs> that would have been a, that would have been a crazy union. one, <laughs> right? Yeah, hey, bro, you got to you got to get all your money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you're leaving money on the table? <laughs> uh, the Marlins almost traded Miguel Cabrera to the Angels in 2007. That one would have been wild, bro. That one because the Angels in the late 2010s were also a significant ball club. Yeah. Um, they were known for being pesky and putting that type of bat in that lineup. And then fast forward and pool holes ends up joining the angels getting him would have been incredible, man. They were the, yeah. So, uh, they haven't been making the playoffs here lately as of late. Right. But that those mm-hmm. late, late two thousands, uh, early 2010s, the, the, the angels were, were right there, you know, it's, especially mm-hmm. all the, all through the, to the 2000 decade. But in 2007, he, he would have been like a one-two punch with Vladdy, Vladdy Guerrero Sr., bro. So yeah. that would have been, you know, a lethal, lethal one-two punch right there. So mm-hmm. what, what, what held up that trade was, uh, so the, the Angels were going to give up Howie Kendrick, uh, second baseman Howie Kendrick, and catcher Jeff Mathis. But the Marlins also wanted one of the following pitchers. They wanted Irvin Santana, Joe Saunders, the lefty. And Nick Aidenhart, they wanted one mm. of those pitchers. Uh, they wanted one one of those guys, and the Angels didn't want to include any of those guys. So they then uh, the Marlins ended up shipping him to Detroit for that Cameron Maybin, uh, Andrew Miller, all those guys trade right. Bro, you give all those guys up, bro. Like it just does not like that's give a, them up. You know, that's a Hall of Famer right there, bro. You know, no, none and of those is, guys, none of those guys exactly. have Kendrick the Mathis. If you put all those guys together, they didn't have the career that that Miguel Cabrera is having. Yeah, and this is not talking down on them. You know, they're still major league. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, still inc- incredible ball players, but it's Miguel Cabrera, bro. Exactly, I mean, bro. Now, looking back in retrospect, you know they would they should have been they would have been like let's we should have pulled the trigger. It could it could have been something incredible for the Angels franchise. Uh, that's and just just thinking back real quick to what you said earlier about the Pujols. Do you think maybe that takes them out of the running of getting Pujols eventually? You know, because uh, they, they they would have they would have had to pay pay Miguel Cabrera right because the the Tigers after they got him they they gave him that fat contract I think. Yeah, bro. I, okay, yeah, I do see that, but Miguel Cabrera also brings in revenue. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Jersey right. sales. Yeah. He fills up the stadium. Yeah. And who knows what would have been of those um, October Angels ball clubs yeah. in those specific seasons? You're right. Maybe they could have put you know. So I you're, do, you're right because they 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 did they did they did lose to the to the Red Sox in like oh wait yeah. right that Manny Ramirez walk off home run you're right and you're right oh nine yeah. they lost to the Yankees that's right um, and it's just and then from yeah, there they were they were knocking on the door all that whole day you you're right they're, yeah bro and I could have changed. Probably could have gotten that sec. Probably could have gotten that second ring, right? <laughs> the, yeah. For the Angels. Yeah, man. It's just. Damn, yeah. that's right, man. That would have been. I, I, I didn't even. I didn't even know this actually before reading this article. I, I didn't know that was the thing, bro. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> I know what, bro. Like we've talked about Miguel Cabrera, like in one of the first episodes, man. Like, I think he had just gone his three thousand hit or something. Yeah. Um, and even his stats up to this point, bro, were incredible, man. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. were already up there, bro. And the bet, the best was still yet to come. His triple crown season, his MVP season, like, yeah, bro, you're right. That's like, yeah, yeah. like he he is the reason, bro, too, that Mike Trout doesn't have more rings. Like, it's there's a lot that could have happened, bro. Maybe they would not end up, they would have not ended up with Mike Trout, but. <laughs> They did get nah. Mike, uh, Mark Teixeira, though, the the Angels, bro. For half Remember? a season. For half a season. <laughs> nah, you're right, bro. That that, that would have been franchise-changing, uh, franchise-changing uh, transaction right there, bro. 
Well, yeah, and on top, real quick, I know we're kind of going off on a tangent, but um, the eventually the Tigers ended up knocking on the door. They were they played in the World yeah. Series, you know, against the Giants, um, against that dynasty that was the Giants in the early 2010s. I, I want to say they went. They had a couple a couple runs at the World Series, right? With they had the, some runs, bro. Yeah, I don't know. If they got to the World Series every time, but just like the Angels in the late 2010s, the Tigers started knocking. With Brandon Inge and and Prince, uh, Prince Fielder, Curtis yeah, Granderson, yeah. and they had those pitchers, bro. They had Verlander, Scherzer, Scherzer. I Price now Price started was a uh, nah, Price was a little later, but they had uh what was that Porce- other guy? Rick Porcello. Yeah, Porcello, Porcello. The the all all those guys they eventually ended up winning Cy Youngs, right? But yeah, bro, crazy, crazy then. <laughs> That was yeah, crazy, bro. I mean, crazy stuff, Pereira, bro. Just, just, bro. just real quick, just real quick. Could you imagine him in the Angels? Uh, Angels I can't. Red? I just <laughs> right? can't, bro. I can't. I can't. Uh, do you think that's because, like, when a player becomes like such a like prolific, like Hall of Fame status player, like when you think of, I mean, Pujols, you kind of got to see him in different uniforms, but like. Cabrera only played for two teams, so like, it's kind of hard, bro, to imagine him like somewhere else. Like, yeah. same with Griffey; he played with the White Sox, but people forget. I don't remember. You know? that. they I remember the Reds right. and the Mariners, you know. But it's like, can you imagine Griffey and the Red Sox? You know, like you just nah, can't. Yeah. Like, you you yeah. can't even fathom it. You know. Nah, you're right. Like even even like we mentioned earlier with the A Rod and the Red Sox uniform. Like, could you imagine that shit? It, it would have looked. It looked a little he funny. It looks right? funny because um, <laughs> for the viewers, this article, Kevin hooks up the note with the link. So we click the link and we go to the article on the internet. And it has videos of some of these um, specific inserts. And the A-Rod one had a, uh, the current A-Rod, like, you know, now that they do commentating with the Red Sox uniform. And he looks weird, man. <laughs> he looks weird, bro. Like, it's just, uh, those are good points, man. And um, yeah. just to round it off, that's the one Kevin wanted to get into. Well, both of us, but yeah, um, Kevin was the one that did the digging for this article. Um, the last one to round off that list before we move on is the Royals almost traded Zach Greinke to the Nationals in 2010. And um, for any of the youngsters out there, Greinke was a force with the Royals. And I, I remember, remember me and you were traveling when they traded him. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember. We were traveling, watching some <laughs> ball games. And uh, we were somewhere in the U.S., you know, <laughs> <laughs> the continental United States. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember when they traded him that season. Uh, I think he went to the Angels, I, right? He uh, in twenty ten. No, he went to yeah. he went to the Brewers. Went to oh, the Brewers. Okay, okay. Went to the Brewers, but I think you had him in your fantasy team that that year, right? Oh, I think that's yeah, I think bro, that's yeah. why I think that's why we. Uh, we're, we're so, so cool. we're so, so cool. affected. We're so affected by that that trade. Yeah, um, yeah, bro. Uh, anything else you got on that? That's it, bro. I really enjoyed that one. Um, that Mega Cabrera stuff is something else. Yeah, bro. that was that was interesting, man. Uh, let's uh, let's get into this last section for the week, so we can uh, before we get before we get to uh, before we drag before we keep dragging this shit on. Uh, we got another sparkle quiz for you guys, real quick. Let me uh, set up my computer here. For anybody that's watching, don't mind us. We're just trying to set up. So um, just real quick, um, Kevin is currently leading the standings. Like I said, it's 1-0. There's no specific um, amount of number we want to get to. We just want to do this for the whole season. Uh, and we might not play a game every time, but we're going to keep a record. Eventually, we want to we incentivize it to where the loser gives something away to one of you guys. And we'll give details on that later during the summer, but um, that's kind of where this is going right now. Just, just you know, test our baseball knowledge, have some fun, and um, also make it fun for you guys to where you guys can get something out of it just for hanging out with us. Um, whenever you're ready, bro, let me know, and we'll both hit play. All right. Uh, just real quick before we do that, this this quiz is for MLB teammates right. with, with 20 wins and 35 home runs in the 2000s. So this is from 2000 to 2010. Uh, teammates with 20 wins and 35 home runs. Uh, ready when you are, bro. Count down. Three, two, one. Let's play. 
All right, bro. Let's see how good your memory is. Um, that's it. Oakland. When did Canseco retire, bro? Um, two thousand, huh? St. Louis 2000, bro. I don't even know who was on that pitching staff. St. Louis 2000, I know, right? Um, Just trying to blank, bro. Jeez. <laughs> that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Okay, okay. ATL 20, 2003. Damn, bro. They had some power hitters up on that club. You want to share a couple of those guys? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Arizona, 40 bombs, bro. Oh, I know who that is. Never mind. <laughs> 40 bombs in 2008. No fucking clue, bro. <laughs> uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, I know. I know. Who's the guy? Okay, never mind. Uh. Oh, oh, oh. Never mind. Oh, one, 20 wins for the Cubbies, bro. I'm trying to play on that one. Okay. <sighs> Shit. Who the hell hit 37 home runs for Seattle in 2001? That's what I'm looking at, too. You in the wins, bro. Yeah, bro. I have no idea. Mm. Okay. Hold on. Oh. There we go. I got St. Louis 2005, 21 wins. St. Louis 2005? 21 wins. Okay, I got that one. Uh, okay. Who, who hit who hit the 41 bombs? <laughs> oh, oh I no. Yeah, no. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one got me that time. Pool, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one this time, bro. I got that one this time. <laughs> good, good shit, bro. <laughs> Oh man, that should just be your answer. Uh, the first answer going forward, time, bro. Yeah. <laughs> for real. Um, 36 home runs for the Astros in 05. Oh, no, no, no. Toronto has me jacked up too, bro. 2000 Toronto. 2000 Toronto. I have one hitter. I only have one hitter. One hitter. Okay, let me think about this. I'm drawing a blank on three of them, bro. Damn, this is fast. Four of them. You have almost everything, Phil? No, no, no. I'm drawing oh, a blank. A complete oh, blank. Can't even, a complete yeah. blank for four of them. Yeah. On the other ones, I have. I have something. We got two minutes left here, bro. Uh, 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's funny when you think you have one. Oh. 2003. Damn, bro, I don't know why I thought my memory was going to be better than it was. Just to just to put things in perspective for you guys out there, I was I was born in 1993, and my boy Richie here was born in 1991. Yeah, so, so we were both uh, hit, hitting our uh, <laughs> hitting our 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 preteen age in the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, leading up to this, we were still putting baseball cards in our pockets. Exactly. <laughs> um, Shit, bro. One minute, one minute. Come oh, on, bro. Thank, 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 wow, thank. bro. Wow, wow, wow. This is a bad one. Really? How does Pedro Martinez not an answer for any of these shits, bro? Oh, I was going to say you gave me an answer? No, bro. Oh, that, that, that's that's a frustrating one. Okay, All the uh, St. Louis ones got me jacked up, bro. For the pitchers. Oh, no, oh, no. no. Who, who was a hitter for Arizona in 2001? Oh, Gonzalez. Right? No. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Shit. 20 seconds, bro. Now I'm drawing a blank. Uh, oh, I got one. No. No. No, nah, bro. That's it. What'd you get? Uh, all right. So yeah, let me count the ones I got right. I got on the one. top. It says on the top. It oh, says your score. Okay, I got forty nine percent. Twenty three out of forty seven. I got twenty five, baby. Oh, Let's go. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Shit. Okay. Um, let's see what we got real quick. Let's just match. Did you get all of two thousand for Atlanta? No. So I was missing Chipper Jones. You. Uh, how, how, how come, I got wow. Jones. Be, I got Jones. I got both of them because I put Jones, bro. I didn't put their first names. Wow, I'm an idiot. I, so I, I gave me the Andrew. both like that. I put Andrew. Wow, that would have gave me 24 right there. Okay, I would. I would have never got Daryl Kyle. 2000 Cardinals. Me, ne- me neither. Me neither. Sorry, I'm just I, setting my and, alarm for the next post. Sorry about that, bro. Um, Edmonds. I don't know how. John Lieber. 2001. For the uh, two thousand, for for hold on for two thousand for Oakland, did you have? Did you have both of them? I had Giambi. That's it. Yeah, I was missing Hudson too. Not Hudson, yeah, bro. Um, what about Toronto two thousand, bro? Delgado, I can't believe. I, I, only, I only had Delgado. I only had Delgado. David I didn't Wells. even have that. David yeah, Wells I had Wells. I got Wells. You did? You know why I got wow. Wells, bro? Why? Because I was thinking Vernon Wells. So <laughs> <for> Wells. <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky with that. I should, one, bro. I should take off a point right there, bro. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, challenge, challenge. Uh, Mike Mussina, I can't believe I didn't get that one. Um, Hold on, bro. I was supposed to stop recording the OPS, huh? My bad. You're good. Um, I can always cut it. All right. Um, the Arizona 2001, I got all of them. You got, you got those? 2001 Arizona. Yeah, I got all of those. Chicago 01. I was missing Lieber. Yeah, me too. I would have never guessed that in a million years. Um, 2001 Mark, Seattle. Nothing. Mark, uh, 2001 Mulder. Oakland. Mulder. I should have got that one. I should. Yeah. Frank Thomas, bro. 2003. How do we not remember that? Damn. Yeah, bro. That's that's the big hurt, bro. That's. And Esteban Loaiza, bro. Wasn't he the guy that got caught smuggling drugs for the cartel? Yeah, in San Diego and, and TJ, he's actually locked up right now. <laughs> free, free, free him. Uh. <laughs> free our boy. <laughs> uh, Bro, we would have got Delgado. We would have hooked us up with 03 Toronto as well. 03 Toronto? Oh, I, I got him. I got I him. Did. Yeah. I, oh, I didn't. Did, did, did you, you get, get him? I got Holiday on there too. Uh, I got holiday. Um, I didn't get anything for. Oh, three Seattle. Did, did you get anything? Seattle? No, no. Me neither. Jamie Moyer, that that one. And Brett Boone. I should I should have known that one. 
03, 03 Yankees. Did you get all those? I only got Giambi. I did. I got Soriano and Pettit. Nice. Because Soriano was such a big power hitter back then. I don't know how I didn't. I don't know how I didn't remember that one. Though I, I love, I love Alfonso Soriano, man. <laughs> He's beast, bro, with that big ass bat. Yeah, bro. That's that's one of the reasons why I love him, bro. The fucking big ass bat. Mm-hmm. Um, Houston, two thousand five. Oh, go. Uh, nothing. Me neither. I should have thought of Oswald, but oh, five Cardinals. We both got that, right? Yeah. Beckett, um, and Ortiz for all seven. I was, I was missing Beckett. Ah, uh, that one took me a while, bro. I went through Lester. <laughs> I went through um, John Lackey because I know they had him a little bit later too, right? I don't I, know if that I was know. the same year. I don't know. I was drawing a blank in uh, 017, bro. It was... The one that's kind of pissing me off is Arizona 08, bro. Adam Dunn and Brandon Webb. They were so bro, big, bro. bro. I don't even remember Adam Dunn being on the on the, on the the D-backs, bro. So I, I'm not even mad about that one. <laughs> no, that, that's true. Um, and then 08, A-Rod and Lucina. Mm-hmm. Damn. Okay. So it's going, finally bro. even. Yeah, it's finally yeah. even. Maybe we'll do another one next week, and then from there we'll take a break. To just, good, and then bro. we'll maybe do them in threes. So yeah, man, let's let these people go. We've already had them for about an hour. If you guys have kicked it this far, we can't thank you enough. We appreciate you guys for kicking it. We hope this is cool and fun for you guys. This is just baseball from our perspective. We share what we like. Um, this is just two inner city kids, man, just sharing what what we um, love the most about this sport, um, the things that interest us. And you know, we just want to share our love with everybody through this baseball community. Um, you can find us on Instagram. That's where we are most active. We post four to ten times a day. Comment section is lit. So make sure you go stop by and uh, drop a comment. Um, we also have a YouTube where we post one video per day. It is actually a short a 30 second to 60 second clip we have 300 plus videos there so make sure you go check that out all these links are down below and subscribe and like this video just so you can uh, help us out and um, reaching more people and letting the little youtube algorithm know that this is some cool entertaining content and um kevin has one more thing to add yeah guys don't forget to turn on those post notifications and also uh add, add in the comments if you guys were able to to guess more names than we did uh if you guys were able to play along with us maybe talk yeah. a little smack little smack on us uh on yeah. our uh, lack of lack of memory um yeah <laughs> man, just just keep messing with us yeah feel free to roast us man we we don't we don't mind it we have thick skin so yeah without further ado we will let you guys go uh i'm ricardo And that's Kevin. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace.